Hi, hello folks, my name is Byron Pass, I'm the MGA with the Josh Allen Agency. Uh, the following video is made in an effort in um, talking about and helping you rather with uh, solidifying the sale. I find that um, it is a point of the presentation where in many cases people, agents rather, are in the home, they're a bit nervous, they're selling, and uh, in some cases because of how we handle the last part of the presentation, which is when they are filling up, when you are filling up the application, when you are asking the health questions, and how you're doing things um, still matters. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I know, done over time, uh, help you solidify your business. Number one, number two, by having solid business on the books, you're going to enjoy the val the the renewal simply because this business uh, is not so much what we write, yes we have to go out and write business, but it's also of uh, how much business stays in the books. Uh, to write $5,000 a week and have half of the business be in the books after six months and none of it be in the books after a year, it doesn't help anyone, right? So we want to be able to write business, but at the same time we want to be able to do it correctly so that it's going to stay in the books. Um, hopefully until a death claim goes through, right? Ideally, right? Uh, I know that not in every case that we make a sale, uh, the business is going to stick to the books <laughs> until the person dies, but ideally, obviously, that's what we want. And really, um, we are looking to have at least a healthy average where 80% of your business stays in the books after 13 months, not just four months, after 13 months. We know the company has a four-month retention rate of business, by which they judge you after 10 months for bonus qualifications where you can get increased bonuses uh, if you have uh, the retention high but really at the end of the day to be able to uh, enjoy renewals in this business uh, it's you know you have to have the business on the books be on the fourth month uh, in other words it has to stay on the books right so the video is not going to be um, a long drawn video and presentation it's simply a video to help you solidify your business better Okay, now, first tip I'm going to give you is once you have sold, right, there is natural tension when you're closing because you're closing and because people are making a buying decision, right? So, believe it or not, one of the things that really, really eases the customer into the fact that they have just purchased insurance is how you complete the application, okay? There's something called sense of ownership and you have to give to the family to the member a sense of ownership when it comes to the program when it comes to the benefits that's going to you how we do that now the reason why we want to have a sense of ownership is because when you give somebody a sense of ownership and they feel like they own something they're more likely to keep what it is they own and to maintain what it is they own, okay? Uh, and there's still a couple of asset tests that we're going to do to make sure that they are in fact buying to keep the policy and that they're not just buying because they run out of things to say or objections to give you and they just want to get it over with and they just said to themselves, okay, let's just buy to get this person out of the house, right? That's not what we want, right? Now, how you give somebody a sense of ownership, okay, is First of all, when you're completing the application, right, you start off by asking, once you close the sale, you do your, you know, intro recap tie down, you talk about, uh, you know, the um, final expenses are completely taken care of, your income is fully protected for three years or five years, there's a terminal illness rider, there's a children's rider, uh, if everything makes sense, uh, you've taken a very important step to make sure your family is fully protected as a program is designed to, to protect you and your family according to you, your needs today. Uh, we only have one question for you. Option number one will take care of your expenses according to the inflation uh, for the final expense cost down the road and option number two will cover your final expenses with the non-inflation amount for today's cost. Which option works best for you? They say option one. Great. I need your social insurance, driver's license and health card number. It's very important that at that point you then proceed with the application, okay? And the tone with which you complete the application has, be, has to be a tone, your, 
the tonal voice that is, where in your mind there is no question that they are sure about the policy. In other words, in, in this folks, it may be a little bit a little complicated to understand, but it is in the confidence that you complete the application that you will give the family a sense of ownership, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is you have to go through that application and you have to do it in front of them, obviously, but it has to seem that you've done a thousand of them. Simply because, hopefully, there will come a time where you have done a thousand of them. Now, it may not be in the beginning, obviously, that you haven't done a thousand, but it has to seem like you've done a thousand. Now, the first mistake agents make, new agents, when completing applications, is they haven't practiced enough applications. Now, I can also say that's a management weakness, not having people practice their presentation, their application completion. And again, part of your training is to complete ten complete applications from start to finish. Ten. Not two or three. Ten. Now, when you complete the application and you do it seamlessly, you're actually giving confidence to the family at that point in time because you're doing it like it's a natural step of the, of the close. You're doing, it not, you're doing it with so much confidence and so much ease that they understand that this is just a natural step. That will take their mind off the purchase and into the details of the application. Now, it's very important that when you're completing the application, you continue to engage both husband and wife. When I say that is, you're asking questions to both, okay? Now, he who asks questions is in control. He who is answering questions is being controlled. You have to remain in control at that point in time. Quite often it happens, that an agent may lose control of the presentation because even though they closed, there's still a lot of questions there and the fact is they haven't really closed because the customer still has 80 questions in their mind that they want to be asking and then what happens is it makes the application completion process to be delayed and in some cases the sale falls off and I can tell you it's a very frustrating thing to be in a home to get to the application and to have to stop the process because all of a sudden they're changing their mind. The reason for that could be not in the how people were completing the application but how they closed actually which is a completely different <laughs> video. Um, so the first thing is giving a sense of ownership. How do you give a sense of ownership? Believe it or not by making sure that you're completing the application seamlessly. By making sure that you seem like you've done a thousand of these. Okay by engaging both member and spouse into the questions of the application. You have to make sure you're asking the questions. Health, uh, the height, the weight, the health questions. Um, and again, a lot of the information you should already know. For example, you already know what they do for a living. So occupation, the occupation question on the app, you should already know that. You should not have to re-ask those questions. By the way, here's a mistake. If you re-ask a question of information that has been previously given to you, you are successfully telling the client, I wasn't listening to you. Make sense? The problem with that is, there is information that of course you have to ask. No question about it. But let me just take you back. When you're doing the, 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 the needs analysis survey, there are sort of certain health questions there that you have to be asking. Now, some of these questions repeat themselves later on when you are completing the application. Now, if you already asked those questions before, for example, cancer, they said they didn't have cancer. If you ask it again later on, you're asking the exact same question, do you have cancer, right? Now, I don't believe in asking that question, but you can reaffirm the answer. And like I asked you earlier, John Mary, there's never been a history of cancer, has there? They're going to say no. Just the fact that I'm rewarding it differently, okay, and just asking for confirmation rather than re-asking the exact same question again, 
tells them that I have in my mind, I remember you told me 5, 10, 20 minutes ago that you never had cancer before. Now, isn't that correct? Yes, they're going to say, right? So, little thing, right? You can just rephrase the, the, the question so that it doesn't sound like you're re-asking the question as though you didn't listen to you know what they said prior, right? Um, what company they work for. Again, it's information you should already have when you're completing the application. Um, these are little, little details, uh, but they make a huge difference, right? Once you complete the application, one of the things that helps solidify your business is when you are doing the button up, you have to let the client know the home office is going to call them. Area code 254, they're going to have a verification phone call, okay? Next thing you want to let them know is, is that they're, they might have at some point to call, the, uh, to call their doctor to make sure the doctor gives us all the information um, that we need in order to underwrite the policy. Now, that's not in all cases, but you always want to give them a heads up. That way, you're in a position to call them a week, two weeks, three weeks later, should you receive a Wednesday bulletin, so that they can call the doctor and uh, hopefully get the records out and send to the company, right? So, you want to make sure you mention that. It's part of the presentation, too. It's right in the button up when you're doing your laptop closing. Uh, the next thing is you want to let them know there's a slight chance in the event they can't get records that the company may send a paramedic to their home. I find that whenever an agent doesn't tell the customer, the client, the applicant that there may be a possibility that the company requests a physical, that's the one time the company wants a physical. So, as a golden rule, always tell them there's a possibility, although not likely, it's possible, that they may request a physical from you. Now, you have a family doctor, John and Mary, you've been with that doctor for 25 years, I'm pretty sure he or she knows you pretty well, and we're going to try and get the records from them. However, if we cannot, there's a possibility this may happen. And in some cases, even though they may send the records, they may still want the physical. So just make sure you always tell the customers, the clients. The next thing is letting them know about the three possibilities. There's always a possibility that people get declined for insurance, meaning there's a lot of people out there who cannot get insurance. Folks, understand something. Insurance is a privilege simply because there's many out there who cannot buy it based on their health. So it is a privilege, actually. And I always say this, the only people who have to sell is us in the field because then the application that goes to an underwriter, that underwriter has to buy on the fact that this person is an insurable risk for the company. So insurance is actually a privilege simply because of that fact. People, some people can't get it and even those who apply, their application has to quote unquote sell the underwriter that he or she is a worthy risk to take for the company, right? So uh, when you put it into that perspective actually it, it makes you um, look at it from a different uh, point of view. Uh, I find it, um, I find that when when we consider insurance privilege, we, um, we appreciate it more. And even families who buy it appreciate it more. And if something is appreciated, chances are it's going to be kept. If something's not appreciated, people don't care about it, they'll throw it, they'll throw it in the garbage can anytime they can. And that's not what we want with our policies. Our policies need to be appreciated. And we have to, in the close, in the button up, in the solidification of the sale, make sure they're going to appreciate the fact they have the opportunity first of all to apply and second of all if they get it approved that they're going to keep it for their family because it is a benefit that is going to be there for their family ultimately american income life is in business not for us to make money but for us to help families and by us helping families protect their families that's when we make the money right so you have to make sure you look at it from uh, from the right point of view, from the right perspective, uh, if that makes sense. The, um, the next thing is, yes, so I talked about the people can be declined. The people can be rated, meaning there's a risk classification premium added to their policy, and that some people are going to get an issued standard, depending on their health and how good their health is, right? Very, very important you mention those three things, right? Um, let them know also that the money is going to come out of the account. I can't tell you how many times people lose business 
because they mentioned the money was going to come out, but they only mentioned it once. I say this, you have to mention it three times, at least three times. The money will come out of the account on this day. The money will come out of the account on this day. Once again, John and Mary, remember, the premium will come out of the account on this day, or by this day. I find that whenever you do that, and it's very clear, and you say it at least three times, there's never an issue. The opposite is where people say it only once or twice, the customer forgets, and I do believe the agent said it, but again, how did they say it? That's the question mark sometimes, and what happens is the customer calls and says, oh, the money came out, he didn't tell me, they said it's going to come, and it's just unnecessary issues that are created just because somebody did not say clearly, loudly, and at least three times that the money's going to come out of the account by this day or on this day or around this day, right? Whichever way. It's very important to make sure that we tell the client that from the void check they gave us, the company will draw the first premium from the account within the next two, three days or by Friday or whenever and to say that three times. The next step is to review the summary sheet. Now the summary sheet, we have the one that shows up on the laptop, but then we also have the paper version. Now the summary sheet is our opportunity to review the coverage applied for. Now I can't stress the importance of this folks, it is so important to take the summary sheet, to write out the numbers uh, on the coverage, to, to write out the coverage amounts rather, and to restate them to the family, okay? Now, AIL did a tremendous job in incorporating the summary sheet into the laptop uh, presentation where we can actually show it on the screen to the, to, the, to the client. However, it doesn't replace the fact we have to leave a paper version of the summary sheet. Now, when we do that, it allows us to restate the coverage, it allows us to put value in the insurance application and validate their decision on the purchase. It's so important to take that summary sheet and to let the customer know this is going to be your summary sheet. We sh and show them the one on screen that you show them there and then take the paper version of the summary sheet and take it and as you point at the benefit on the screen go ahead and write it down on the paper version and explain it one more time. So one more time, John and Mary, this is your whole life coverage in the amount of $30,000. Point at the screen, write it in the piece of paper. Okay, now, John and Mary, this is going to cover both you and both yourselves for final expenses. So, John, you got $30,000. $30,000. Mary, you have $30,000. $30,000. Now, that's clear so far, isn't it? Perfect. The next benefit was your income protection. Now your income protection, it says right here, it's $50,000 or $2,000 a month for 25 months, whatever it shows there. And you go ahead and you, re you write it again on the paper version. Okay? Now your children's writer is included. Here's your children's writer, $10,000. Your organization is, your union's name goes here. I put it already there. The premium is, as I discussed, once again, John and Mary, remember the premium will come out of the account in the next two, three business days, or by Friday, or by Monday, okay? So remember, premium will come out of the account, okay? There you go. This is my name. This is my number. Everything is clear. This is a copy of what's being applied for. I'll go ahead, tear off a copy, put it in the folder, okay? Very important. And then, folks, this is the asset test. The asset test, I call it an asset test because it is an asset test. The asset test is to take the void check, to look at the customer, to look at the applicants, and to say, you know, the decision you've made today to go ahead and apply for this coverage is a very wise decision. However, it's only going to be a wise decision provided you go ahead, apply for this, you get it approved, and more importantly, you keep this coverage. If this coverage is going to create a burden for you, or if you plan not to keep this coverage, I'd rather not apply for you. So I want to make sure, John and Mary, 
that both of you are comfortable going ahead with this, and more importantly, you intend to keep this coverage for your family. Once you say that, you go silent, and they have to be the ones that tell you, yes, we're comfortable, yes, you may go ahead. And then, what happens is, during that action, you put the void check, and they have to give you back the void check. Once they give you back the void check, you have a solid deal. Now, understand, doing this, I'm not saying you're never going to have a cancellation, because you'll still have cancellations in some cases, but if you do this and you do it the way I just did it, which is basically I took the button up in the laptop presentation and I embellished it. Okay, I, I mean, that's the recipe. Man, I put salt, pepper, and I put all the extra spices I like to make sure it's there and they see it because what happens folks is when we don't button up the sale correctly when we don't solidify the sale correctly as hard as it was in some cases to close it that fast we're gonna lose it we're gonna get the phone call before we get to the office the following morning or the following two days later or a week later and it's just disappointing simply because in some cases you didn't do the button up correctly okay uh, and you have to give them that jolt of confidence when you're completing the application and at the same time you have to shake the deal that's why it's called the asset test, you're shaking the deal because if the deal falls off it wasn't a solid deal in the first place and if the deal can become solid you're solidifying it by doing the steps I just taught you in this video so again let's just recap everything make sure you're giving the applicants a sense of ownership how do you do that? you do that by going through the application, engaging them both, and doing it with a lot of confidence in what you're doing. So you have to be the one that shows confidence in completing the application. Your confidence in completing in the application and asking the questions, not re-asking what you already know, by the way, I said that before, will give them confidence, okay? And be engaging when it comes to that. Number two, you have to go through the points as to what's going to happen next. The money's going to come out of the account. You have to let them know that at least three times. You have to let them know they're going to receive a phone call from home office, area code 254. Be prepared for that call. Tell them how wonderful I was. Tell them how great of a job I did with you. Okay, very, very important. Uh, number three, talking about the three possibilities. You may be declined. You may be rated. You may be issued standard. Uh, along with that, to uh, let them know there's a possibility of a physical that you may ask them to contact their family physician to get the records out very very important and lastly folks is the asset test when it comes to uh, sorry before that the summary sheet taking the summary sheet from the application from the laptop and rewriting it on the paper version okay and going through the numbers with them one more time and again we state in the fact the premium will come out on this day right I don't care if you say it five times as long as they know the money's going to come out, then there's no question in their mind the money's going to come out. And again, when we don't say that enough, you know, it, I know sometimes it's out of nerves when somebody's trying to, in, you know, your first week, second week, even first month in the field, right? You may be still a little shaky when completing applications. Again, the, the more you do it, obviously the more confidence you're going to gain. But if anything, this is where your acting skills can pay off when you can complete an app as though you've done a thousand of them. If you can master that art of completing an application, even though it may be your second, third, fifth, tenth application, but you can do it like you've done a thousand of them, that's going to give confidence to the customer, to the client, to the buyer, to the person who's uh, applying for the insurance. Uh, and the last thing is the asset test, where you pretty much take the void check, you hand it back to them, and you make sure that they are comfortable with the decision they took of purchasing this coverage, that it's going to be there for their family, provided they get it, it's approved and that they keep it. That's the most important thing. Folks, writing business and keeping business is a journey. These are skills that when you practice them over time, you're going to become great at them. However, this is about being consistent. It's not something you're ever going to get good at only if you do it once or twice or just when you feel like it. It's something that you have to do all the time so that you can have good retention of business. Why do you want to have good retention of business? Well, first of all, if you're unselfish, it means every family that you sold out there is going to maintain their policies longer and hopefully until they need them, which is when they die, right? And if you are selfish and you're doing it for the money, well then do it for the money. How do you make more money 
Yes, we have to write business. Yes, we have to write at convention qualification levels and higher. But if you write business and it doesn't stay on the books, it's going to affect your net to growth, it's going to affect your retention, and ultimately you'll make less money than you would have been able to make had the business stock, uh, stayed on the books, right? So if you do it for unselfish reasons, do it for the families out there. If you do it for selfish reasons, do it to make more money. Either way, as long as you do it and you have good retention of business, you're going to make more money. And more money in your pocket means more families out there are keeping their business. So uh, I hope you watch this video not just once, but 7 to 14 times until things sink in and that you make it part of a habit to make sure that you are practicing good habits when it comes to solidifying your business. Thank you.